so we can use a diksha also to understand the lesson plan chapter 6 life process see the lesson requires basic knowledge of characteristic shown by living organisms so we can assess this one by taking your written test your lab activity your group discussion or even the homework okay activities like role play so the basic objective is content the students will be able to describe the various life process present in plant and animals welcome friends for class 10th subject biology life process online session i am gr chopde pgt biology jnv sangli so what you are going to discuss today so we are discussing introduction what are life process types of nutrition then autotrophic nutrition in plants remaining we will discuss in the next session summary finally i will give a assignment so living creatures must keep preparing and maintaining their sources that is essential so since all these structures are made up of a molecules so they must move molecules around all the time so living things perform certain a life process so they will do life process like growth excretion respiration circulation etc so what are life process all the processes which together keep the living organisms alive and perform the job of a body maintenance so they are called as life process so they are the maintenance process in living organisms needed to prevent the damage and break down so to do this energy is needed for organisms so we can broadly classify the life process into four categories growth digestion respiration circulation excretion so growth is overall but we are studying here the four steps here we referred as a nutrition nutrition so the process of transfer of sources of energy from outside the body of the organism to inside so energy will transfer from outside to inside process of intake of nutrients what are those nutrients like carbohydrates fats proteins minerals vitamins and water by any organism as well as their use of these nutrients by the organism now what are the uses to prevent the damage and breakdown of cells or tissues to grow organisms and life on earth that depends on the carbon based based up molecules so carbon is required now types of a nutrition so there are different types of nutrition autotrophs organisms which can make their own food are called autotrophic they use simple substances like carbon dioxide and water example green plants and some bacteria second heterotrophs they depends on others for their food here the organisms use complex substances and here the broken down into simpler one so complex substances are break down into simple ones example animals and fungi now we'll discuss nutrition in plants see here the green plants are autotrophic and they synthesize their own food by the process of photosynthesis so the process by which the green plants make their own food like glucose from carbon dioxide and water by using sunlight as a energy 
in the presence of chlorophyll is called as photosynthesis you can see here the carbon dioxide molecules are coming from the air and from soil the water molecules are coming so both will combine together here so they will combine together and produce a glucose so that glucose is used and during that oxygen is released and here the starch is stored in green leaves here you can see that how that process will takes place now so photosynthesis we can summarize this is the chemical equation six molecules of carbon dioxide required 12 molecules of water is taken in presence of light energy a chlorophyll a pigment produce glucose that is c6h12o6 and release the oxygen as a by product a long time ago the earth is was very young no life was there so the life on its surface is occur so due to primitive bacteria in the oceans so these are the primitive bacteria it was a hot volcanic world in you know, hot gases are there so because of the lightning all these the hostile to life environment become rain precipitated warm water was produced due to this all bacteria evolved into something new and they started capturing the sunlight and they invented the photosynthesis because of the green pigment and slowly the life existed under water for the small chromatophores the oxygen so the photosynthesis properly changed our entire world to one of the oxygen oxygen see that both now earth is still green as land plants evolve on the earth Process better than bacteria. So photosynthesis enabled the complex life, like dinosaurs, beautiful flowers, insects, mammals, birds, fishes, even children, mammals, life. the raw materials required for photosynthesis light that is sunlight second chlorophyll third water and fourth one is carbon dioxide so light so this is the visible light we call a web gear see the nanometer wavelength so more rate of photosynthesis takes place in see that a blue and red region color region 
but there is very less photosynthesis or no photosynthesis at a green color green color because the green color is reflected by the plant leaf and they absorb more the blue and red color region so who will do that one a chloroplast so are the organelles in which the photosynthesis occur this is the cell of mesophyll inside there is a chloroplast and these chloroplast contain thylakoid and grana you we'll study more detail in next classes pigments so that thylakoids contain a chlorophyll a which is the main photosynthetic pigment then chlorophyll b is there xanthophylls there and carotenoids so these three are called accessory pigments they absorb light and transfer the energy to chlorophyll a they also protect chlorophyll a from photo oxidation so this is a leaf diagram so the leaf diagram is there it is very important for you to draw the diagram you can see there is a upper epidermis okay there is a lower epidermis here you can see stoma and there are mesophyll cell which contain a more dot like structure that is called chloroplast you draw the diagram from your textbook see this is how now steps so the first step is here first step is the absorption of light energy by chlorophyll then chlorophyll absorbs sunlight and release a electrons so conversion of light energy to chemical energy takes place during this a splitting of water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen takes place so that process is called photolysis here takes place so oxygen what is the source of oxygen they will ask so water is the source of oxygen so water plus energy split into hydrogen and oxygen so this electrons are further used a chemical energy which is produced is used for the reduction of carbon dioxide to carbohydrates and that cycle is called benson and kelvin cycle so these steps are very very important for the examination point of view see how that photosystem will work chlorophyll molecule absorbs the photons that is sunlight and excited state and when the electrons are coming back so they will release that energy so that is used to carry out photosynthesis see here so chlorophyll molecules atp and nadph produce that reaction is called light reaction during that water is split and oxygen is released so therefore source of oxygen is water then atp and nadph used to produce glucose by using carbon dioxide that reaction is called dark reaction and this is entirely enzyme so here nadp nicotine amide adenine dinucleotide phosphate and atp you know already adenosine triphosphate now what happens after photosynthesis so the food prepared by the green leaves is in the form of simple sugar that is called glucose so it is stored in the leaves of the plant in the form of starch now other than carbon dioxide sunlight water okay co2 what is required they need for building their body nutrients nutrients like nitrogen phosphorus iron and magnesium they are all taken from the soil by the plants among that nitrogen is very very essential element used in the synthesis of proteins and other compounds so this is taken up in the form of inorganic nitrates or nitrites in ninth standard you have studied nitrogen cycle okay so it is taken up as a organic compound and which are prepared by bacteria from the atmospheric nitrogen what is that bacteria rhizobium bacteria so these are the raw materials required for photosynthesis now during that photosynthesis the stomata play important role in the exchange of gases so they will take carbon dioxide inside and release oxygen during the photosynthesis so how so they take up carbon dioxide at night so they prepare a intermediate product called malic acid which is acted upon by the energy absorbed by the chlorophyll during the day because the stomata remain closed during the day why to prevent the loss of water because of 
high temperature and low availability of water. So day only they convert solar energy into chemical energy and during the night they take carbon dioxide. Okay. Question is how stomata open? Each guard cell contain nucleus, chloroplast and vacuole. The opening and closing of the pore is the function of guard cells. So the guard cells swell, turgid when water flows into them, causing the stomata pore to open. Similarly, the pore closes if the guard cells shrink yeah, flaccid, when they shrink yeah, flaccid. Here you can see how that stomata will remain open and close. So this diagram is very important. Guard cells, you draw this diagram. Book may be high. Nucleus, this is aperture and these are chloroplasts. Now this is a stomata open here. Exchange of gases taking place. And here the stomata are closed. So in all plants, they open during the day and they close during the night. But in desert plant, reverse process. They close during the day and open during the night. Okay. So this is how photosynthesis helps. Now we can observe here opening and closing of stomata in this a chili. Back in plant. spring, the chili. chilies blossomed. Flowers are opening. As the plants continued to photosynthesize, so the, the young process fruits process. of the chilies began to grow. Now in summer, photosynthesis is at full pace and sunlight and carbon dioxide are in ample supply. So for that we have to supply water first. But now it's up to Sarah to provide the third crucial ingredient for photosynthesis. This is water. Water. Now this water is absorbed by roots. Most photosynthesis happens in the leaves. But the water doesn't enter the plant so through the leaves. The it has to come through the roots. So they absorb the water. Tiny root hairs, a single cell thick, penetrate the soil. The water enters the plant by a process called osmosis. But to reach the photosynthesizing leaves, somehow the water needs to defy gravity. It's in the leaves themselves that this process begins. So there are, you can see, a tiny stomatas. On the underside of the leaves are tiny pores, stomata. When they open, water evaporates and escapes into the air. And they will close. So this is how they will prepare the food in these plants. Okay, now, experiment to show that sunlight is necessary for photosynthesis. So that we will study in our next class. Thank you for joining.